and welcome to Six Questions from the Internet with Kate Campbell, the October 2019 edition. Wow. I know. T- t- this year is going by. Really We're fast. having fun we doing having this, fun. aren't we? Right. Okay. Well, let's let's dive right in. Um, Andrea Winger-Turner would like to know, uh, I know you play both piano and guitar. Do you mm-hmm. play or want to learn other instruments? <laughs> well, I played clarinet all the way through high school. So I'm a clarinetist. Have you played it on a record? I did, actually. On New South? No, I played it on Moon Pie Dreams, the first recording of Moon Pie Dreams. And I actually used, I still have my original Bundy plastic clarinet that I started with. And I played it. And I hadn't played in 20 years when I did that. So my embouchure, (laughs) not so great. But I, I liked the clarinet, but I just didn't see, I didn't have a vision of me like going around the country and playing the clarinet but i was pretty good makes me want to break out my old tenor saxophone hey i can play tenor too it's the same i played tenor for a while because i didn't want to be in the marching band have i said this on i didn't want to be in the march so i went to mcgavick high school here in nashville which uh some of y'all know this it was like the biggest school in the state of tennessee when they built it and they had excellent fantastic band and i was first chair clarinet but i really didn't want to be in the marching band because you had to wear those stupid uniforms, and I just was not into that in the mm-hmm. 10th grade. Yeah, it's good for your calves, though. I was right. in ninth grade. I, I was in the marching band. I know, but I just didn't want to wear the uniform because I'm just not that kind of girl wearing <laughs> band uniforms. So, And I knew band cap would be fun, but I, I said, well, I can do without band cap too in the middle of summer. So I thought, well, I could just be still be first chair clarinet in the, reg- you know, in the band, in the concert band. I'll go, no, you can't do that. I said, okay, well, fine. I think they thought, oh, she'll have to do that. And I said, well, okay, then I won't be in the concert band. And they said, well, you can play French horn. I go, okay. So, yeah, I went from clarinet to French horn (laughs) for like three months or whatever. Three months? (laughs) You know, it was like, but I sold my really beautiful clarinet and I got my first really great guitar. Okay. Because I just thought I'm not going to be playing clarinet when I get older. And I still love the clarinet. Y'all I love jazz music and I tend towards my my reed instruments in jazz. But yeah. Okay. I gave it up. <laughs> there you go. So uh, part two of Andrea's question is yeah. how does the instrument help you when writing a new tune? So did you write when you're writing Moon Pie Dreams, did you have the clarinet in mind? Um, I don't remember if I had it in mind or when we began recording, I thought this, the clarinet, I think might sound cool on that. And it does, even though it's me playing it. I mean, all those years later, you know, I cringe a little bit, but I think I was playing again, not my, I think I was playing my original Bundy. It's not a wooden clarinet. So I think I did okay. Yeah. Uh, But yeah, that's me playing. But no, I just seemed to fit something about it. The clarinet, which I think fits on a lot of songs though but i haven't played it since on any recording okay (laughs) all right so next question from debbie s williams and i think you've thought about this who are the artists you'd be happy to hear to sing the phone book all righty i made a list she made a list y'all this is really and i kept and i kept adding to it this is the thing i started thinking about last night in the middle of the night i just want you to know that and i also took this question i mean who really influenced me and i think i have to tell you that uh my mom had a beautiful alto voice her mother my mamma from kentucky had a little bit higher range, you know, a thinner, a not so quite a round voice. But when I would go to Kentucky, we'd go to church, you know, and I would stand by Mamma. And uh, I think my voice is actually kind of a mixture. So I, when I thought about, I really do, I think as far as influence on me, still my mother, uh, you know, she had, she had sheet music mm-hmm. that her, my papa gave her and my mother could play also the piano and just this kind of swing style so i had all of that that music and so some of that stuff was who and again voices that i really like that influenced me and still would listen to um rosemary clooney mm-hmm. donna shore a nashvillian yes and i grew up there doris day i love Dor- i love the song case sera sera mm-hmm. and i like doris day's voice so these are early and again you know my mother had sheet music to a to a lot of mm-hmm. that so not only would i hear them on the radio or records actually records those were notice they're mostly all women in fact everybody i've listed is is women so of course my voice when when i was thinking about this question then uh the the second really big on top 
at the same time was Dolly Parton because she was the first, you know, I could sing with her and my mother, we had the, the records and I could also figure out how to play Dolly's song. So I've loved Dolly Parton way early on today. I think my voice can, it can do again. It's kind of similar. I think yeah. it has a pretty good range and I can, I can um, do, well, the, you, you I can hit do the Dolly notes. pretty good. I can hit the notes through the head voice, right? So we were talking to, um, I interviewed Vince Gill earlier this yeah. week and he was talking about singing with Dolly Yeah, and he said, it's like singing with a radar. Yeah. Because she's just always on, right on, right, right on the point, you know. Right yeah, on, yeah, and you know, and I have pretty, I'm pretty good. People yeah. have been in the in the studio with me. I don't, I mean, I'm lazy, which makes me sing good, <laughs> you know. But I'm like, uh, you know. But I hear when I'm off. I can even adjust. I know in in concert, if I'm pitchy, I know until my own. I'll correct while I'm going, but I'll know if I haven't hit it right. But again, uh, Dolly, I think I have a similar range to Dolly, mm-hmm. and I can go into, not all women have, Dolly has it, this is what I call a head voice. It's not like a tenor, it's not like a male, but I can really mix uh, the two. I probably have a little bit stronger, uh, heavier, lower register than Dolly, but uh, which is more like my mom. So, you know, and then I, I want to put Patsy Klein. go ahead and put her in that. And uh, Karen Carpenter, unbelievable. I don't think everybody knows she had four octaves. She didn't even ever want to sing. I mean, the story, it just breaks my heart every time I think about Karen Carpenter. Tremendous voice and, again, great range. And I would definitely say, I mean, I had all their records. I could sing with her, and I would definitely say Karen Carpenter. And uh, Linda Ronstadt. I saw there's Linda. a great documentary coming up about good. Linda Ronstadt. Yeah, good. I saw her at not the original Grand Ole Opry house, but me and my friend Mary Welch, if Mary listens to this, Mary drove a Pinto. She could drive, and I couldn't drive yet. Uh, we saw went to see Linda Ronstadt at the Grand Ole Opry house, you know, the new one at Opryland. Oh, wow. We got, we were on the very back row at the top and Linda came out there. She didn't hardly do any conversation. She sat on a stool and she sang for like two hours. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I'm so jealous you got to see Linda Ronstadt. Yeah, I did. I did. And, um, and then of course, Emmy Lou. Oh, Emmy Lou. And Emmy Lou, um, you know, I just knew, I mean, the teenage boys had some of her school, her first albums. I was like in seventh grade and they loved Emmy Lou. And so that's when I first heard Emmy Lou would have been, you know, her first albums. Yeah. And, uh, so many people it's different. Yeah. But I would say that, um, but vocally not as much as just the way she, she phrases and, mm-hmm. and everything's, but I think vocally more, it, I would still say Dolly and the, and the folks I've listed in one and some, People in more religious music will know this person, but Cynthia Clausen, I knew about her early on because she came to and sang at Baptist programs or whatever. She played the piano and sang, and I thought, well, that that girl can sing. I mean, I was like, you know, a lot younger. And then, of course, she's she's singing the great hymn at the end of uh, what's that? What's the movie now? I forgot. Trip to Bountiful. Trip to Bountiful. That's Cynthia, of course. Mm -hmm. Um, That was much later. But anyway, I knew about Cynthia Clausen from the, again, the time I'm giving people that I really listened to in that really from Dolly would be earliest in in, uh, my mother's records as far as Rosemary and and Dinah Shore. That really made, I would say that have influenced me the most would be, would come from the earlier that you are. I would say Linda Ronstadt and um, Karen Carpenter is just oh, yeah. really the restraint Un- in their voice phrasing. that they don't. It's the phrasing. Yeah. It's and they say with Karen that when she would, when you would actually be in the room with her, you could hardly hear her, but she just a microphone loved her voice. Yeah, and and she knew how. I don't know how she sang and played the drums at the same there time. Personally, was a man she just. A <laughs> I've been singing That's that a really lot to good, myself. Hunter. Thanks for working on my Karen Carpenter. <laughs> People go, wow, who was that? Oh, that was. Lost his <laughs> love through his indifference. <laughs> that was a little bit of solitaire for y'all. Yeah. Some carpet. <laughs> that was beautiful. Thank you. You've been working on I need to sing that more. That sounds Kate. good. You do. <sighs> Okay, moving on. Hey, maybe you could sing on my next record. I would. Well, we'll I, fig- would I would love that. <gasps> we'll find the song and we'll you'll sing because yeah, I can I, sing harmonies. I know you, know. you can. Okay. I know you can. I, oh, I would lose my mind to sing, and that helped me get to Grammy voting. Yeah, <laughs> which I've always wanted to be a Grammy voter. <laughs> okay, Barbara Sharkey asks, "What's the best book you've read lately?" Oh gosh, see, I should have I should have written that down and thought about it. Oh. 
I don't know. It's hard to remember. There are so many. I try to keep up. I should have looked at my notes. Hold on a second. Okay. Now, I listen to people who, if you don't know, I love mystery books. I listen to mystery books when I'm driving, uh, read books. I usually write them down here when I finish them. We might need to come back to that. Let's, uh, or let's put it on another, remind me of this and let me think when I go home. Because I write down every book I've. I've read in a notebook that I kept. I've kept it for like 20 years. So let me uh, look at that and, and for the next time we do a taping. We'll so I'll tell you what I'm reading right now. What? Is, uh, so we went to see Dion Warwick in concert two weeks ago. I, I thought about Dion Warwick. Yeah, I, Dion. I mean, yeah. I saw it at Lake Tahoe 25 yeah. years ago. So she, uh, so she sang the theme from Valley of the Dolls. And so mm-hmm. I posted about it online. And I had a friend in Texas who messaged me like, oh, gosh, Valley of the Dolls. And then she was talking about reading the book as a child. And she oh. Got in trouble oh, wow. for having the book oh, at elementary school. Yeah, and then I said, "Well, I've never read I the book. So. I've only seen the movie." She said, "Oh, the book's really good." So I downloaded the book for two ninety nine from iTunes, and I started reading it. And I know in the sixties it was trash, but in two thousand nineteen, it's, it's fine nothing. literature. Yeah, I mean, it's well, really it is. you know it's really well written, and mm-hmm. I find that reading fiction helps me in in writing. And I have to get. I don't. I always want to read nonfiction all the time. When I get fiction, right. in, I feel like what I'm writing is more uh, creative, or you know, because I'm getting better and in, more creative input. I guess. Right. Well, you're getting definitely. It's a different kind of input. Mm-hmm. I think. Yeah. 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 Valley of the Dolls. Yeah. You can see that late at night on TV too. It's like it's, you can see the Godfather stuff. I've seen the Godfather. I mean, mm-hmm. you can tell I stay in a lot of hotel rooms. <laughs> a bunch. And also the one that I hate and I refuse to watch, but it seems like every time in a hotel room and, and Ira's with me, Deliverance comes on. And I, I hate it. It's so I can't either. I just said, uh-uh, turn it off. The Burt, the Burt Reynolds that when his leg uh, breaks, I oh, can't. Oh, I can't deal with it. So. <laughs> I mean, as a Southerner, I had to watch it and know what it was. I know. <laughs> Just because it's referenced all the time in the South, but um, I hate it. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) All right, David Ownby wants to know: being a fan of folk outsider and visionary artists Mm -hmm. like Miss Thing, who did the cover of uh, "Damn Sure Blue," the latest album. Miss Thing did that. Uh, What's your favorite site that you visited? And I guess he he references uh, Pasequin in Buena Vista, Georgia. So I guess is there a, a hot spot for? Those artists? Well, you know, um, I would say recently the one, I mean, they're all over the place. Sometimes they're they're harder to find than you would think. You have to, I mean, people know and you have to go online. The one that I was surprised, and I was there, there was nobody around. It was actually kind of closed in the way there was nobody. There wasn't a docent there or anything, was Howard Finster's house. And I kind of stumbled upon it. You know, my friend Pierce has used some of his his stuff. But I was there by myself, and also there were cats everywhere. It was just like going to Hemingway's house, if you've ever been there. There were cats everywhere, and it was just me. It was kind of a cloudy day. And I ended up taking pictures. And again, even though I was familiar with his work, but just kind of being at that place was one of those more recent trips where I thought, okay, this is pretty cool, you know. Now, you know, when I wrote Jesus is the Way Home, that's about a place down in South Alabama. And it's not really outsider art. I mean, I like outsider art. Mm -hmm. Look for outsider art. And uh, the place where the phrase Jesus is the Way Home came from is a place called the Cross Garden. And it's down close to Montgomery outside of Prattville. I thought it was going to be like Finster or some of the other people that I've written songs about and have some of their art uh, no, that's a completely different thing. So this was a guy who just painted all kinds of stuff on signs or whatever, and he just got out of hand, and he had, he lived in a trailer, and then he crossed over the road. And, and I tell the story when I sing the song, and um, it was, you know, all kinds of just signs like, hell is hot, 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 <laughs> stuff like this. Um, but in one place across the road where he'd gone across the road and he'd also written all this stuff and Bible verses and everything, there was this little shed and I walked and I walked in there. Actually, I got a copy of some fans of mine had gone down there and taken pictures first and they'd given me a little 
book. And then I went after I, and I saw this and saw that it was the only place where I thought was a point of grace was inside this little shed in the middle of all that other chaos was Jesus is the way home. So I thought that was a point of grace. I would not consider him an outsider artist, though, in the way that some other folks I talk about and I've seen their stuff. Yeah. Well, I love Jesus is the way home. Yeah. That's one of my all-time favorites. People love that, too. Yeah. yeah. I think, you know, I've always said when I make records, I'd always have a Kate song on each record. And that, mm-hmm. that's one of the first ones I'd want to record. People have responded to that song. Mm-hmm. You know, I wrote that with uh, with my pal, Walt Aldridge, who's yeah. a great songwriter. and. Yeah. Uh, as soon as I told him that story, I just told y'all, we just, I said, okay. Yeah. It took us about three hours. We didn't write anything. I remember this when we went to lunch. That's always what we do when, when I'm co-writing. We sit around, we talk about all the things that could be, <laughs> and then it usually takes a couple hours, and we think, well, let's go have barbecue, you know, or uh-huh. let's go have catfish or whatever, mm-hmm. or meet and three, and then we come back, and then it's kind of funny. All of a sudden, we get to tune in about 20 minutes. Well, yeah, because you, you, you fed your brain. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing the little catfish or fried food won't help. It's I know. true. Unless you go into a into a need that afternoon nap. Right. That's that's the other side <laughs> of it. You have to write fast. So Audrey Bushfield kid. Uh, thank you, Audrey. So. Do you know Audrey? Audrey. She's gone to I yeah, she's from here. Hey, well, she's originally from Texas. Well, welcome, a, a transplant. Audrey. She's been on my Ireland trip. Twice, I think, now. Oh, my God. Well, she wants to know, if you could sing a duet with anyone, living or dead, who would that be, and what would you sing? <sighs> I think we've talked about this with Elvis, you know, was always great. But... Yeah. I mean, of course, I mean, I don't know if I'd be able to sing if it was Elvis. I think I'd have You'd a freak faint. out. Yeah. I think with most of the people even I talk to today, I don't know. You know, I mean, You're I've been one. honored because Emmy Lewis sang on, on, you know, harmony on some of my mm-hmm. records. And uh, had... Nancy. Guy Nancy Clark, Griffith and Guy. John Prine. John. Rodney Crowell. So, you know, I guess. You've been you've been hashtag blessed. I've been hashtag blessed. <laughs> I mean, really, I know, you know, already. I mean, I think I think it would have been great to sing with uh with Rosemary Clooney or mm-hmm. someone like that. I love I love those tunes or too. Karen. Or Karen. That would have been a little hope goes up in smoke. The good thing is Karen could have sung the low part of that. I know. I, know. I can't. I don't have quite the range she did. But I got, you know. yeah, I got their love songs compilation, Carpenter's Love Songs in 97 at the mm-hmm. Gardendale, Alabama Walmart. <laughs> so Amazing. It would have been. So 97, it would have been in there with a, uh, probably Rose Reveal would have been right in that time or, or Visions of Plenty. Yeah. This so is a plenty, you, you know, is one of my favorite. Yeah, so you, you were in the rotation with the Carpenters back in. Well, you know, we've already talked about this. And we might need to remind people, you have early, early recordings. You heard me sing when you were 12. I did. I know. <laughs> well, so I, well, was I, that I, an outdoor thing? Did you? I came and saw you. In Gardendale. <laughs> in Gardendale. I feel like, and then we saw you at City Stages with Moon Pie Dreams. Yeah. And That's we bought the first record. Songs, Songs from the, the Levee at Sherry's Interiors, which was, I think, right. did Huddy work in at Gardendale, Sherry's? No, but or Sherry, you know. Sherry was a f- friend. I don't think Huddy worked there. No, well, she didn't work there, but she would be a regular customer. We got our china. You know, he was listed at Sherry's. Yeah, Sherry's Interiors. That's where, you, you know, you go. China. So it's like they register. Yeah. Register your china. That kind of place. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So they had a little kiosk up <laughs> about the register selling Songs from the Levee, and that's where we bought our copy. I still have it written in there. <laughs> I would write down wherever we got my we got my CDs and right. the date. Yeah, that's so it amazing. Was big, it was a big deal. Priceless. It was a big deal to get a CD back then. <laughs> it was. Now it's just all on the internet. It's all on the internet now. Now you can't get a CD. <laughs> well, you can. But well, you can. You it's can. Hard to find something to play them on. KateCampbell.com. You can get all the CDs. You can get all the CDs. <laughs> okay. And finally, before we go completely off the rails. Yeah. <laughs> Kim Gillian asks Kate. I've been reading. That was really dramatic. Kim dramatic was Kate. I've been reading a lot of Billy Collins poems. Do you have any of his that you're fond of? Well, Kim, I went back and dug up my Billy Collins, uh, one of my Billy Collins collections, and I have to tell you, and I started reading last night, and I hadn't read in a while. And I just forgot how much I really, really like him. So thank you for asking this question. But I don't think I can choose one. I I will say, you know, I'm a real big fan of 
even in my songwriting, I'm a, I'm a big fan of haiku, and I'm a big a big fan of just a great sentence, simple, direct sentences. And I think that's why I like Billy a lot. But if you don't even read the poems, if you just the title of the poems, are, I mean, I just like I was I was skimming through all the poetry. And I was going, okay, that's a good sentence, you know. Yeah. So that's the kind of stuff I really really like. So. Now that I'm rereading again, maybe we'll maybe I'll mark some and we'll talk about it again. And I'll say, okay, these are these are like three I really, 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 really love. Okay. There's a couple from the very first collection, which I started back with the first one I started reading last night, um, about the writer. Can, y'all can look these up about writing, but it's in that very first collection, I believe, of, of poems. I don't know Billy Collins. I need to go look him up. Well, there is he does come from Irish descent. Okay. But he's I think he was born in America. He's American. He's yeah. Really good stuff. <sighs> well, thank you, Kate. As always, it's been illuminating and fascinating. <laughs> thank you. And uh yeah, so we'll we'll uh, see you on next month in November when we'll be getting ready for the harvest and the thanks the giving thank of the thanks. Right. So we're going to be asking for questions for uh November and December. Yeah, November yeah. and December. So okay, get y'all your be thinking, thinking about them. <laughs>